Hey guys, welcome to the Storybook Panda channel. I'm so excited to share with you one of my favorite stories from the ancient martial arts genre, The Legend of the Condor Heroes by Louis Cha. This man was responsible for popularizing some of the most fantastic martial arts concepts throughout Asia in the 60s and 70s. And The Legend of the Condor Heroes is one of his absolute gems. So without further ado, here we go. Our story begins in a small village in ancient China named Ox Village nearly 800 years ago. The ruling dynasty of China was the Song Dynasty, which was known for its great contributions to culture, art, and inventions to ancient China. But it fell short in its military might and lost its control of northern China to its neighbors, the Jurchen of the Jin Dynasty. Although art and culture continued to thrive within the borders of its reduced territory, its citizens were greatly concerned about the corruption of the Song government and the imminent threat of further invasion by the Jin. It was early evening. Yeung Dit Sum, which roughly translates to Iron Heart Yeung, was at home with his wife when it suddenly started to snow. He gazed at the familiar sight from his window. Whereas native southerners would probably be more adverse to the cold, he was used to it, having grown up in the north. He was forced to flee to the south due to the Jin invasion. He despised the Jurchen who ruthlessly murdered his friends and family in order to seize control of northern China, and they continued to oppress the Han Chinese who remained there. He despised them perhaps just a little more than the corrupt Song government who had failed to protect its citizens and allowed this to happen. Let's hurry in preparing for dinner. It's starting to snow hard and we'll be here soon he said to his wife, as he was expecting his blood brother, Gok Siu Tin, which roughly translates to Sky Fury Kwok, and his wife to arrive. That must be them, he thought. Ah, blood brother, you made it, said Ironheart. You two must be very cold trekking through the storm. Come in and warm your stomach with some wine. And the two brothers started drinking while their wives completed the final preparations for dinner in the kitchen. The two began discussing their day. Ironheart shared a story he had heard from the market earlier that day about a corrupt chancellor who had absolutely no regard for the well-being of his Song citizens. Not only was he imposing ridiculous taxes to improve his own wealth, he was also doing business with the Jin who were the very ones at war with his own country. After a heated conversation, the two brothers went outside to cool off despite the snowstorm. The peaceful silence of the storm was broken by the faint sound of swishing feet across the snow. In the distance, they could make out the silhouette of a single person making his way through the heavy storm toward their direction. As the figure got closer, both Iron Heart and Sky Fury could see that the man approaching them was wearing a bamboo hat, a light cape, had a long beard, and carried a sword on his back. It was apparent he was a Taoist priest. Look how effortlessly he's moving through this heavy snow, Sky Fury said to Ironheart. Must be a master of Kung Fu. Ironheart was awestruck by this revelation. Let's invite him in to warm up and have some wine with us, he said enthusiastically. Do Zhang, Ironheart yelled through the storm. The weather is so terrible tonight. Would you like to take a break from your journey and join us for some wine? Why are you trying to stop me? Taoist was short in his response. Ironheart was shocked and offended by the Taoist's tone. His blood brother, Sky Fury, responded, Dojo, we apologize for being so abrupt. We were having some wine ourselves when we noticed that you were traveling alone in the snowstorm and thought you may like to join us. We did not mean to offend you. Fine, if you insist, the Taoist priest said with a note of irritability. He cut in front of them towards Ironheart's home. Ironheart was infuriated by the Taoist's rudeness and grabbed the priest's arm while asking, Dojo, by what name should we address you? But the priest's arm felt like a noodle that slipped through his grasp. Before he knew it, the priest had him in a wrist lock. Ironheart let out a scream of pain. The priest let out a laugh that echoed through the storm and threw Ironheart's arm back at him as if dismissing an inconvenience. He turned his back towards them and continued to make his way into the house. The priest opened the door in a rough manner and proceeded to the table ahead of his two hosts. A Sky Fury placed down three bowls on the table and began to pour the wine. The priest said, I can tell by your accent, you two are obviously not from around here. Furthermore, if you are really farmers, why would you know Kung Fu? 
This accusation, although not inaccurate, caught them both by surprise. Sky Fury finished pouring the wine, but no one drank. Sensing that the priest was suspicious of the wine, Sky Fury took the priest's bowl and drank it to prove their sincerity. I apologize, for the wine has become cold. Let me pour you a new bowl. The priest said, even if you had poisoned it, it would have no effect on me, and proceeded to drink three bowls in succession. He then threw his cape on the floor and placed a large parcel wrapped in black cloth that he had been carrying on the table. Both Ironheart and Sky Fury suddenly jumped back in disgust, startled by what rolled out of the parcel. A bloody human head. The two wives screamed from the kitchen as they had been observing from a distance this whole time. You murderous scum! uttered Ironheart as he lunged towards the priest with a dagger that he had been carrying. But with what seemed like a simple movement with a single arm, the priest struck a pressure point on Ironheart and disarmed the dagger instantly. Ironheart leapt back, holding his arm where the priest had struck. You stinking Taoist! If you have the guts, step outside and I'll give you a taste of my young family spear! Ah, finally we get to the main point. It's a fight that you want, he said arrogantly and began to walk outside into the snow. Ironheart grabbed his spear and stormed after him while Sky Fury followed. You crooks dare to have the audacity to claim that you know the young family's spear, said the priest. Enough talk, draw your sword, Ironheart demanded. I'll finish you traitors with my bare hands, responded the priest. And that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please show your support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Leave your questions or comments below and I'll be sure to address them in the near future. And I'll see you next time on Storybook Panda.